Hey Titans, this is Mordecai from GamerTitan.com. In this video, it's going to be the beginning of a series on understanding the basics of getting up and running for scripting Lua within your core game. Now, for some of you, this may be a bit basic, but I still suggest watching from the beginning because we are going to, as we progress, we're going to build off of our previous knowledge. So I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently. We're going to be focusing on using what's called the Lua demo and I will provide a link to that. In fact, there's a link in the description down below to my entire guide on everything that you'll kind of need to know or how I, what I feel that you'll need to know to get up and running with your scripting in core. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to type Lua into this box here. We can click run and it can output it. You can also download Lua directly to your computer and do the same thing. However, this is just easier to access because it's online. So the first thing that you are going to want to understand is what is a variable. So a variable is able to store any type of data. And so for example, what you'll see is you'll see a local variable. So we'll name it local test equals 10. And so now test is 10. So if we were to print this, and do print test and click run, it outputs 10. And that's because test is associated with 10. Now, because this is a local variable, we'll kind of get into this. But for right now, if we were to delete this and click run, this will still run. So for example, what we could do is we could do test equals test plus 15. And we're taking the variable test, we're making it equal to test plus 15, and so this should output 25. So this is pretty straightforward. We can have, we can make a variable with a number, which is just by putting it as the number there. We can also put it as a string. This is a string, you put it in quotes, so this is basically text. And so if we were to try and run this equation right here, it would fail because this is now a string and not a number. So let's we'll go ahead and do that. And you'll see that it says syntax error. And we can also do what's called a Boolean. And a Boolean is either true or false. It can be like that or like that. So as we discussed earlier, we had the local in front of test. And so with Lua, one thing that kind of was a bit confusing to me in the beginning was what is known as scope. And so to demonstrate this, what we're going to do is we're going to make test equal 10. And we're going to create a function real quick by simply saying function, my function. And then we will put this print test in here and we'll end it and what a function is is it allows us to call what's inside this function and it allows us to call this and perform this block of code anytime we want and all we have to do to do that is call my function so if we go ahead and run it we can see that test is still being passed into this function and test equals 10 and so because we ran our function, it printed test and it output 10. Now, the thing to understand is if we were to make a new local variable and call it test, and we made this one five, and then we did test equals test plus, and we'll just leave it as test for now. So we'll print. We'll print test as well outside of the function. And so what's going to happen is, is we have this local variable test. It's equal to 10 and it's going to be printed first. And then our functions called and we have this local test equals five and we're going to print test with this. And so what we're going to get is test is 10. So it's going to print 10 and then it's going to print five. So we can see that it printed 10 and five and that's because a when it's local this 
this local variable is accessible everywhere throughout the code in our in our script if it's defined up at the top. However, within a child block of code, which is in this case my function, if we redefine something as a local variable, that means that we made test we, we've defined test again, but it is defined differently inside of my function. And so even though we have test inside of this function, we are not changing the test that is outside of the function. And to prove it to you, what we'll do is after we call this function, we'll go ahead and print test again. And the reason we're doing this is because you could say, well, you're printing test and then you're calling the function. So it didn't have time to change. So let's go ahead and slap local back on this and we'll go ahead and run and it'll be 10, 5, 10. And so we can see that even though within this function, once again, because we redefined it as a local variable, it is only accessible, this test, this variable right here is only accessible in this function and any child blocks of code within this function. So any conditionals such as like an if statement, while loop, whatever we do. And if you don't understand what if statements are and while loops and all that, we will be getting into those. The thing that you need to understand is if you start to see something that's local, just understand that it's only accessible in its block of code. So in this case, it would be my function or its child blocks of code. So anything within this my fun anything within my function is then accessible. So if we wanted to make another function and we wanted to change our variable in my function too, if we were to just print test from here and change this print to my function two, we'll notice that my function two is, even though once again, first of all, my function is redefining test here as five, because we're printing test in my function two, and we, re, we, we, we remade it a local variable in this function, it's going to print 10. So if we click run, We can see that it's five, uh, 10, 5, 10 again. So if we wanted to be able to modify our variable in other child blocks of code, we wouldn't want to redefine the variable as local in this function. So now what's gonna happen is, we, is Lua checks that if this doesn't have local in front of it, it checks up above the child block of code to see if this variable was defined. And it's going to see on line one that it is. And so now we are actually modifying this variable, the, which is in this case now, the global variable of our script. So if we click run, we're now gonna have 1055. And that's because we've modified this variable. And because it is at the global level of both of these child blocks of code, it can now be modified throughout both of these functions. And so, for example, if we were to take test equals test plus one and then print it, we can see that's 10, five, six. And it's because first we printed it just as a base. We then printed it within this function, which defines it as five. And then in my function two, test equals test plus one. So it's six. So understanding scope is very important because when I first got started, I was very confused on why certain things weren't, I, I couldn't do different things with them. Even though I seen that it was defined up above, I didn't understand that if I was slapping local in front of stuff, I was redefining it. And so just as one more example here, we'll have we'll print out 10, we'll print out five, and then this is actually not gonna be really defined because it doesn't know what test is, so. Or actually, because it's it hasn't, so this is interesting. We're making a new variable called test, but it's seeing that test is from here, and so it's still making it the same. So a better example would be doing, redefining it 
as say eight and then doing test equals test plus one and it would be nine because we made a new variable as a local so hopefully that makes sense to you this is a basic concept for some but for me it really was confusing in the beginning and so understanding your variables and understanding scope which is having local and global scope is very very important when you're scripting because this allows you to have variables name the same thing in functions and various blocks of code for example for in core we'd have something like player that allows you to define player multiple times in multiple blocks of code without impacting the global version of that. And so it's very powerful, but it could also be confusing. So hopefully this video was helpful. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos that are more focused on a very specific thing that hopefully will help you build a foundation to understand what you need to know to do well with scripting in core. So if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And once again, if you ever want access to more core related content, please hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you next time, Titans.